Okay, I will put it in my mouth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Lollipop Mike. Uh, we have just been listening to the beautiful Shaku, Shakuhachi flute playing. It's a Japanese bamboo flute that is incredibly difficult to play. You wouldn't know that from listening to Scott Fortney here, but uh, he has been studying for years to play this. <laughs> anyway, here we are, and it is not just in Montpelier, but around the world that people are gathering today to remember Hiroshima and to dedicate themselves to working for peace. It's hard to imagine the horror that was Hiroshima and Nagasaki when they were bombed. When the United States dropped the first 
and so far only two atomic bombs in history. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, whose care is for the whole world and not for any one nation, was speaking in Hiroshima this morning at a ceremony commemorating the bombing. And this is a bit of what he said. Tens of thousands of people were killed in this city in the blink of an eye. Women, children, and men were incinerated in a hellish fire. The quarters, the... Oh, my spell check did something. A quarter of a century later, three quarters of a century later, we must ask what we have learned from the mushroom cloud that swelled above this city in 1945. What have we learned? Crises with grave nuclear undertones are spreading fast. From the Middle East to the Korean Peninsula to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, humanity is playing with a loaded gun. We are just one misunderstanding one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation. So says the head of the United Nations. This is grim and overwhelming. What can we do? The hatred, greed, and delusion that breed wars exist everywhere, in our minds, in our relationships, in our lives, where we do have the power to transform them. Children are thinking of peace when they fold paper cranes. And children all over the world have been folding paper cranes. And there is a children's memorial in Hiroshima filled with paper cranes that children all over the world have sent. We will soon be walking peacefully and singing together. These are ways of being in peace. G Glenda mentioned uh, children making origami cranes all over the world. Many of you may know the story behind that. Uh, a, a child named Sadako Sasaki was two years old when the bomb was dropped in Hiroshima. For the next 10 years, she led a healthy life, and then at age 12, came down with what the people in Hiroshima call the A-bomb disease. And in Japanese folklore, uh, they say that a crane lives a thousand years. And if you fold a thousand origami paper cranes, you can overcome your illness. And so Sadako and her friends started doing these cranes, but they actually took it a step further and they decided to dedicate each crane they made to world peace so that what happened to their, them will never happen to anyone else ever again. Now Sadako did die, but her legend lives on. And one of the things that we, last year we had paper cranes that were origami cranes that were made for us by a woman from Hiroshima who was born four days after the bomb and she sent them to be part of this walk. My husband and I met her a few years ago when we were in Hiroshima and she was so moved to know that this small town in Vermont was doing this dedication to peace. She has dedicated her whole life to ending nuclear weapons and ending the possibility of war. And so this year, we decided that we would try and get children to help make cranes. And so with the help of the after-school programs at the TW Wood Gallery, um, our, the after-school art programs, we asked children to make cranes. I was expecting them to make like 100 cranes. Well, I think we, I think we have 1,000 cranes here. And I have some children here are going to pass them out. Come on up, honey. <laughs> And they're gonna and just reach in the bag and pull out a crane and please take this crane with you. You can even take two cranes. There's a lot of them. Um, um, spread out, guys. Theo, go over here, honey. Theo, go over here. 
Start, yes, yeah, start with our flautist, yes. And Junie, Junie, go straight ahead. Kathy, will you gesture to my granddaughter? There you go, come over here. Isla, you stay there and... Over there. Find an empty Find an empty, find someone who doesn't have a crane. There you go. Over there, okay, there we go. Please take more than one. I have so many. <laughs> Isla, come on over here. Taka sent cranes again this year. Um, her cranes are really almost, uh, I would say, expertly made. Does anybody not have a crane? Okay, good job, guys. Um, and so at the end of the walk, when you leave, we'll, I'll give you one of Taka's cranes, which are extraordinary. Okay. And now we are going to be instructed in walking meditation. Welcome to our remembrance, our commemoration of Hiroshima, and welcome to um, mindful walking. We are honored and humbled to be standing on the land of the Abenaki people. Um, for those of you new to this event, this is a silent walk. We turn off any devices. We walk as one body, although we will be crossing probably six intersections, one of which is a fairly busy or major intersection, Bailey Ave and um, State Street. We'll walk down State Street and end at the high school, Montpelier High School in the playing field, where we'll gather in a, again in a circle. At 7.15, the adjusted hour of when the bomb was dropped in Hiroshima, originally it was dropped at 8.15 in the morning in 1945, but at 7.15, we will be, um, hopefully, if the walk is well paced, at the State House lawn, and there we'll form another circle and we'll, we will, the bells at Christ Church will be invited 77 times, once for every year since 1945. This is a time in coming back uh, to oneself in Buddhism, it's called shamatha in Christian, in Christianity, we might stop and offer a prayer to the universe. Um, prayer for peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in, peace in our communities, our nation, and peace on this planet that we all call our home. So um, it, it can, or it can be a time if you have a meditation practice of just coming back to your breath. So when the last bell is sounded, at Christ Church, we'll resume our walk, and um, Glenda and I will lead us all um, down State Street and eventually reaching Mont Montpelier High School. Um, during the walk, Kenzan will invite the small bell, who's right here in the black robe, um, uh, an Incan, and for that bell, we, we will not, we don't stop. We walk in such a way that we arrive in every moment. Although in truth, we have a destination of the high school, we just, we're walking for walking's sake. So in every moment, we are arriving. 
constantly in the process of arriving. In an essence, we're walking to go nowhere. I found it interesting that the word mindfulness um, or sati, um, which comes from the ancient language in the day of the Buddha, the scriptural language, um, the ancient language of Pali, it means, um, mindfulness means to remember. So that to me is very apropos as regarding this, our event tonight. We walk in such a way in each step that we deeply remember the horrific events of August 6th, 1945. But Buddhism is very steeped in paradox. Along with the remembrance of the horror of that day in history, we also ground ourselves in the, the beauty of the present, the beautiful, however warm, the summer night, surrounded by a sea of green, beautiful trees, and, and brotherhood and sisterhood. So we walk in such a way that as well as remembering and honoring the past, we touch the ever fleeting present moment. And if we make walking meditation a habit, we can actually, we can actually change the future. It is possible by the way we live. It is a very important tool of peace, at, at least as taught by my teacher, the late Thich Nhat Hanh. And to conclude, in the words of Father Dan Berrigan, Jesuit priest, poet, fierce anti-nuclear activist, he said, to remember is to bring back together that which has been scattered, to make whole again. So we do this in the way we walk tonight. We bring our awareness to the soles of our feet, and we try to avoid any, any useless thinking and we rest our mind on the beauty of the sun and the sky and the beautiful green all around us. And we walk in a way where we, with each step, we caress the earth beneath us. Each and every step, we caress the earth under our feet. So I do hope that you enjoy your walk on this very memorable, evening and um, thank you all of you for, for coming out. It's extremely, extremely hot. Uh, you may notice that there is a filming going on. Orca Media is uh, filming parts of this ceremony and walk. You should just be aware. And now Mary and I will take the banner and uh, be at the head of the walk, and you can follow behind us.
to express my deep gratitude and respect and admiration by sending Mike Origami Cranes for your devoted and thoughtful peace action, remembering Hiroshima. It is a great pleasure and honor for me that my crane, paper cranes will join your Peace Walk on August 6th. With my Origami Cranes, I will feel as if I would be joining you in your Peace Walk as a participant from Hiroshima. I love folding origami, especially paper cranes, which represent our hope and prayer for world peace without nuclear weapons. We have realized the importance of learning from history and not to make the same mistakes. We have made a lot of mistakes, which have led to many wars. War is an absolute evil. We are all responsible for future generations. Lori, did you want to begin with the comments? We will uh, just send the mic around the circle. And if you have something that you think of later you'd like to say, we'll send the mic around again. Hello. Uh, can you hear me all right? No. no. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Okay. Hi, I'm Lori Beach. From, I'm from Plainfield, Vermont, United States of America, um, the country that brought the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As we remember the suffering in, in Hiroshima, I hope that some of us will dedicate ourselves to eradicating, to eliminating all nuclear weapons worldwide. And there are many ways we can do that. And if we don't, we're all in great danger. You know, of six times that either the United States or Russia began to prepare to launch nuclear weapons believing the other country had already done so or was preparing to do so 
for those six times at least. We were very lucky that we didn't have a worldwide nuclear war. So there's a, and we continue to have the risk of nuclear war by accident. How long can we keep being lucky? What we're doing is we're pl playing Russian roulette with 15,000 nuclear warheads belonging to nine nations around the world. And if we don't get rid of those 15,000, uh, they keep going up, if we don't get rid of nuclear weapons, either by accident or on purpose, they will be used. So we, we are all in great danger every day. But there is hope. There are things we can do. The treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons was signed and ratified by 66 countries. So it has become part of international law. And there are several states in this country and in a lot of cities and towns that have passed resolutions urging our federal government to join this international treaty. So we can join, we can, we can urge our own town, we can lobby at our state legislature, we can talk to our congressional representatives to move toward getting rid of these weapons. We're fortunate here in Vermont that Congressman Peter Welch is one of 13 representatives who signed the Elizabeth Holmes Northern House HR 2850 to abolish nuclear weapons and spend the money instead on peaceful purposes. So, interested in talking more about what action we can do. I would be glad to see you after we go down to the river with our hours for peace. If anyone wants to talk about some actions we can take, I'd be glad to talk with you. Thank you. I worry about the future, uh, but I hope we all make choices in uh, about the world. You have to almost swallow the mic, get it very close to your, your mouth, mouth. And, and, and project. <laughs> uh, I have been watching the half moon all the way over and just feeling like a lot of people are doing this right now and that Perhaps with that hundredth monkey, this will be the time that things will move. And I just have faith and hope and continue to work for sweet peace. Hello, my name is Walt Gaskill. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I'll try a little harder. It's like voting harder, you know? Anyway, um, this is my first time here, and uh, I'm, I'm honored and humbled to be with, with you folks. Uh, I, don't, I know a couple people nearby uh, where I live, uh, the St. Albans area, but uh, I don't know, it seems like uh, there isn't the thrust, at least in the area where I am, um, to towards peace, and uh, I'd love to see it ramped up a little more. Um, like a lot of you, I'm troubled by some of the things that I see in the media, uh, I try to avoid the mainstream media, and I appreciate the things that religion, particularly in the way of uh, rituals and contemplation support, uh, uh, 
can uh, can be for people in this world, and uh, I uh, I hope it can continue to serve that purpose. Other than that, I uh, again I'm happy to be here, and uh, I wish you all the best, and, and hope to be here next year. Other family members. Good evening. I'm Ethan Park. Um, heard to me how privileged we are in the United States because we haven't been a war on our soil since the Civil War, so we heard in 150 years. And yet, um, the fact that we're here tonight and practicing mindfulness and awareness of wars throughout this enormous planet shows that we are all, or should be, one human community. The um, poet Carl Sandburg said that there's only one man in the world, and his name is all men. There's only one woman in the world, and her name is all women. And there's only one child in the world, and their name is all children. So it's was with that in mind um, that I was thinking of our world community and how we're all affected when there's not peace in the world. Um, my name is Arnie Abramowitz, and uh, I drive through Mount Pelia and I see signs that say, uh, drive like your children live here. I would say we should live like our children live here. And if we want them to have a future, we need to be very, very careful about nuclear war and climate change. I think the three signs we have here today, remembering Hiroshima, war is not the answer, and peace is the answer. Say it all, and if we could follow these signs, be in a much better place. I come because it's part of a family tradition. My wife's mother was devoted to peace. Her name was Christel, Christel Holzer. And Christel would be here if there was any chance. She passed on a long time ago. And uh, she was very committed very committed to uh, working for peace. And so when this day comes, uh, it's a special day. She passed away on this day in her life. So it's very uh, kind of a, a day of, of, of remembrance for me. And uh, I'll sing a, a few songs for you in a few minutes, right? You know, but uh, I, I wanted also to apologize uh, I just recovered from uh, <laughs> rotator cuff surgery, so my arm is not as good, and that's one of the reasons I wasn't walking because I can't carry uh, carry things or, or move in certain ways. But I'm glad to be here with you and we'll sing a few a few songs. My name is Joseph. I live in Marshfield. Um, trying to think what what makes sense on a day like today. And one of the things that I think about is the threat to our democracy that the continuing existence of nuclear weapons epitomizes. The people of the world have spoken, 122 nations have passed a international treaty to abolish nuclear weapons. None of the nuclear weapon states have joined that. The American people have shown time and again that they want to see the end of nuclear weapons and the end of the threat of nuclear war. It has not happened. We are told that today our democracy is under threat because there are people who are trying to restrict our voting and we're trying to restrict our ability to speak out. And that is very true. But the threat to democracy goes back at least to 1945 when the American people did not vote for this bomb to exist and have made it very clear they don't want it to continue to exist, but it continues. 
So on a day like this, I just not only want to remember those who died 77 years ago in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and in so many other places around the world, but I want us to commit to bringing real democracy into this country and into this world. Because if we had that, these weapons would not exist. My name is Ken Don, and I'm grateful to be with you all this evening to hear your expressions of compassion and caring for the people and for this world. And I'm grateful to be with you to walk for peace, to chant for peace, to sing for peace within the world and within ourselves. Um, my name is Mary. And in truth, I felt a little bit rushed back at the library. And I didn't follow up on um, some words from one of my favorite people, um, uh, Daniel Berrigan, Father Daniel Berrigan. When he spoke about the meaning of the word remember, he said he another way, he explained it, it's to make whole again. And for me, it's about embracing paradox, which I spoke about at the library, and the particular practice Buddhism is full of teachings around paradox. And yes, there is so much suffering and horror in the world, but there is also every day we have the opportunity to cultivate joy and peace and happiness and boundless gratitude, boundless gratitude for what we have while we have it. And I, I'm known, I can have tendency to be a little bit preachy. I think I have some Puritan in my blood. Um, but um, if, I think if we want a culture of peace to counter the culture of death and destruction and war, that we live in every day, we have to be very, very purposeful and, and grow our hearts in that direction if that's what we want to leave to our children. And this, this in today's world, it can be a challenge to cultivate gratitude, but I learned the hard way. I have a child with severe disabilities and I was determined that I did not want to become bit embittered in life. So I'm just speaking from what I know, but um, that is all that my, my teacher taught was building a culture of peace and suffering and the end of suffering. So I'll pass the, um, I hope I didn't sound too preachy. Thank you, Mary. I don't think you sounded too preachy. <laughs> uh, is there anyone who has not spoken who would like a chance at the mic? Okay, oh, we oh, have... Yes, yes. yes. I'm very grateful for all of this. All of the people I just found out yesterday from my dear friend, Teresa Mejo. And Peter, and uh, very grateful for them um, doing this and, um, and letting me know about it. And very good to be here. Thank you. Having heard our individual voices speaking up for peace, we will now join in join our voices together in harmony, even though we're not harmonizing. If you know a harmony, if you want to harmonize, that's fine. But just having all these different voices singing together is harmony. 
and harmony is peace. It's, it's things coming together, things that are different coming together as one. So Rick will lead us in a few songs. Hopefully you will know them or he will teach them. Uh, and uh, take it away, Rick. Well, I, I think that you can hear me, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So these, these are songs that, that you all know. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of, a lot of time working with Pete Seeger and a lot of wonderful people that I learned songs from. I, today I decided to wear a hat that was a gift for my, one of my mentors, you Utah Phillips. This is Utah's hat, so Utah is with us today in a way. And this is a song that uh, I had the chance to actually meet this guy, uh, Ed McCurdy. Ed McCurdy wrote this song years ago. And you know it. Last night I had the strangest I never dreamed before. I never had all agreed to put an end to war. Sing it now. I dreamed I saw a mighty room. It was filled with women and men and the paper they were signing said they'd never fight again and when the papers were all signed and a million copies were made they all joined hands and bowed their heads and prayed Oh, prayers were said, and the people in the streets below were dancing round and round, and swords and guns and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Now let's sing it together. I want to hear you. I know. We gotta move it. Just take one step. Maybe you need so to feed us the words. Last night I had the strangest dream I never dreamed before. I dreamed the world I always to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room. Filled with women and men. And now, when the papers were all signed and a million copies were made, they, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and they were all prayers for And the people in the streets below. Now another song that everybody knows uh, is, is Pete Seeger's Where Have All the Flowers Gone? And I, I wanted to sing that because years ago I was singing, uh, with a, we had a group of people both from Germany and from here in the United States and we were singing at the Kennedy Center. And uh, we sang this song in two different languages at the same time. We sang it in German. <laughs> I can't do this, but we, because we had a bunch of German people, we sang it in German and in English, you know. And after the show, some of the veterans came in because it was Veterans Day. Everyone had been in the cemeteries remembering all the soldiers who died. And they said, this is such a wonderful moment for us to see both people from America and Germany up on a stage, not fighting, but singing together. And it really kind of stuck with me, that whole idea about, uh, about war. And, you know, Pete, when he wrote this song, it was too short. He said, well, Rick, I wrote the song, but I never sang it. 
It was too short. It only has a few verses. And a man named Joe Hickerson, who was a he was a, a, a young camp counselor at the time. He later became head of the Library of Congress. <laughs> but at the time, he was a young camp counselor. And he wrote the other words to make the song into the circle. And that's the song that we know today. It's a little bit quieter, but if we sing it together, it'll sound great. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls pick them everyone. When will start going down and laying some flowers After back we the all side. sing down by the riverside we can do that and then i will introduce ken's on 
uh, to say a little something and lead us in chanting and drumming. All right, we're going to take a chance. After, actually, after down here, by here, the here, riverside, here, here, here. we would like everyone to pick up a flower from this basket in the center and carry it down to the river with your intention, with your aspiration, with your commitment to do something for peace and to send the flowers off down the river. After, That's after the, Kenza. After Kenza. Right. All right. Are we okay. all ready? Yeah. Uh, we got to sing this one loud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking a risk now. I I you I can't really go this high, but I, for you guys, I will move my arm up here. So. I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside and stop. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I'm gonna say, and everyone, down by the riverside and study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war. Side away down, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I'm gonna walk with that prince of peace, down by the riverside and study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more, ain't gonna study war no more, ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more, ain't gonna study war no more. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna shake hands around the world. Down by the riverside, it's a study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. If we can go to the center and each take a flower or more than one flower to <laughs> and, and hold it and consider what is our what are we committing to do what action what thought what what can we do in our lives to create peace and that is our commitment and our dedication that we will send with these flowers down the river so, so we'll take a flower come, and then come okay. back in the circle and Kenzan will uh, tell us a little about chanting and drumming and do chanting and drumming teach us a chant to lead us down to the riverside well, I think we have to lay it down. Okay. So, Peter. 
This is where the flowers have gone. This is where the flowers have gone. This is generally, it's like never. She has said that you, it seems like you're not going to be able to do that. No, no, no. Yes, I do. I have to take this back to never as a shield. Yes. So we had an opportunity to walk in silence. And silence can be a way of, of coming to this present moment, to coming to peace inside ourselves. And another way can be through chanting, through dark drumming, allowing our emotions to move and change with the chant to let them simply flow through without getting stuck. So this chant that we're gonna do this evening um, within a specific order of Buddhism, Nipponzan Myohoji, they do a, a lot of uh, peace walks specifically for nuclear disarmament. And their practice is chanting this chant, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which is actually what's written on the drum also, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And this means praise to the wonderful Dharma Lotus Sutra. And that's shorthand for praising the contents of the Lotus Sutra. And the contents, the main, main teaching of that is that we all have the wonderful potential to wake up, that we all have the potential to see clearly. And so we can chant with this wish for ourselves to see clearly and the world to see clearly. Clearly, if we saw clearly, there wouldn't be war. <laughs> so. so the chant, Nam Yo Renge Kyo, I'll chant it and invite you all to chant in the response. And there's a specific rhythm to it, but the Harmonics can be whatever you like, so you're welcome to let your voice flow freely. Namum <laughs> Oh. 